Hey footy fans, it's time for the Round 16 AFL recap. It all started on Thursday night uh, when the Suns took on the Tigers. The Suns winning 77-67. to Now, I'm not sure about you folks out there, but that uh, win from the Suns certainly uh, surprised me. Uh, the Tigers drop out of the eight and now sit in ninth spot on the ladder for the Suns. A great win by them and a great performance by Tuuk Miller. Uh, 36 disposals, 9 clearances and 5 inside 50s. He was always around the ball, always creating opportunities. Uh, so well done to Tuuk and well done to the Suns for that um, good win up, uh, up against the um, reigning champs. Friday night football, Cats up against the Bombers at the Cattery. Cats winning 98-57. to Then we had on Saturday the Ds taking on the Giants. The Ds losing 55-64. Uh, to Now the Giants, they jump into the 8. They're looking really good for a final spot. Um, and the 8 is really close. That 7th and 8th spot is really close. You know, you've got teams like the Giants there. Uh, you've got teams like Richmond just out of the eight. Uh, Carlton maybe have a, a slight chance in getting there. The Bombers are looking in good form and also the Fremantle Dockers. So it's going to be tight uh, in these last few weeks of footy uh, to get a spot in the eight. Then we had the Crows up against the Lions. The Crows losing 59 to 111. The Dockers up against the Blues. The Dockers losing 64 to 80. And the Blues hang on and get back-to-back -back win, so well done to them. Uh, then on Saturday night, we had the Hawks up against Port Adelaide. Hawks lose 53-87, to and um, yes, it, despite the result, it was just a great um, day, I reckon, to and game to recognise a legend of our game. It was Silk. Sean Burgoyne played his 400th game, first Indigenous player to play 400 games. Uh, well done to Silk. Uh, he's an absolute legend, inspiration. He's a family man. Uh, he's a leader on and off the field. Uh, and just seeing him out there and reflecting on his career, there's a bit more left in the tank of Sean Burgoyne. He now joins that 400th club and he's looking good. Uh, so well done to Sean Burgoyne there. Congratulations. On Sunday, we had the Swans up against the Eagles. The Swans smashed the Eagles 118 to 26 at GMHBA Stadium, 92 point margin. Joel Amadi, I wanted to talk about this kid. His commitment to the team, his commitment to the footy, his commitment to the contested possessions. He just chucks his body at it. He gives it 110%. Two goals, 12 disposals. And yes, you might be thinking, well, only 12 disposals. But he was always there, creating that physicality and that just that extra body and that extra pressure. And in the whole game, you saw the Swans do that. The pressure, the quick, smart football. And the Eagles, they looked lost. They looked unaware. And they didn't know what was going on. So well done to the Swans. A huge win and a huge statement there. Then we had the Pies up against the Saints. The Pies losing 61-70. to uh, I wanted to talk about the last quarter of that game. Because the Saints were leading by... Um, a fair, a fair bit throughout the whole game, uh, and I thought, well, this one's over. They're just going to blow them out. But the Pies in the last quarter just left it a bit too late. The Saints kicked two behinds in that last quarter. The Pies kicked five goals and six behinds. Um, you know, and you just think if they put a bit more effort in the other three quarters and were playing like that last quarter, it certainly might have been a win or at least, uh, you know. Just maybe even closer, like two points or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's a shame for the Pies because they had that potential in them and uh, they just left it too late. So uh, the Saints hold on by the skin of their teeth in the end. To finish off round 16, we had the Dogs up against the Roos. Now, after uh, our last meeting on Good Friday, you know, the Dogs smashed us by 128 points in and um, the Dogs beat us in the end this time, 108 to 79. So a great win uh, for the Dogs. The Dogs are on top of the ladder now, so they are top dog in the comp. You can certainly say that. For the Roos, it was better than last time, 100%. And it's been good these couple um, la these last couple weeks, you know. The effort, the pressure on the ball. We are um, a team who has got a fair bit of uh, youth and youngsters 
and we work the ball by hand. We were quick with the footy, and we just had a couple slip-ups. The dogs were a bit stronger uh, on their defensive end at times, uh, so well done to them. Ruth, we put up a good fight, and heads up, because maybe we can cause an upset uh, for round 17, which I'll talk about uh, a bit later on uh, at the end of the injury update. But before that, let's go to Isaac's GMP of the round. My goal of the round goes to Sam Walsh from the Carlton Football Club. Toe poked it in, uh, you know, to keep it in play. Um, then Kennedy, handball off to Walsh. He's a bit, you know, he was deep inside of the pocket. Got to give him that. Snap around uh, the body. The bend on that ball, he just hit it perfectly. And that was the ceiling goal for the game. Uh, yeah, a brilliant game of football. Always around the ball. We've seen him all season just keep um, developing and keep um, showing us his talent. Uh, he's he's just brilliant on the field and uh, he's a star. My mark of the round goes to Bailey Fritch from the Melbourne Demons. Uh, Max Gorn, little chip over the Giants players. Fritch comes in over the side uh, and saws high, takes a nice hanger off Lockie Whitfield. The, the little um, launch off Lockie Whitfield and the grab on that ball coming in from that uh, side angle. Uh, great grab by Bailey Fritch there. My player of the round, how could you go past him? He's already got uh, two of my players of the round this uh, year, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and he's got it a third time, so three times lucky for Darcy Parrish from the Essendon Football Club. He won the Tom Wills medal, and I know they lost up against the Cats, but this guy was always around the ball. This guy is a ball magnet, and I've continued to say this throughout the year. For me, he's a brown low smoky. I just think uh, the Bombers need to get a couple more wins uh, in these last few weeks, and he is a brown low smoky for me, 100%. One goal, 43 disposals, five marks, one contested, 13 clearances, 15 inside 50s, and 908, don't forget the extra eight, 908 metres gained. Magnificent. That's all I've got to say. He's a, he's a star, and he keeps um, developing, and I've said this in my last recap, uh, just give it two or three years for Essendon to just just bubble over and open up and, and be a dominant team. And this guy's going to shine straight through that and he's going to stand out big time. Folks, we've got an injury update and it's coming up next. Getting into the injuries now, we'll start off with the Suns. They had Noah Anderson out with a hand injury. Uh, his period on sidelines is to be confirmed. Uh, they also had Zach Smith out due to concussion. Josh Corbett will miss the usual week uh, due to concussion protocols. The Tigers have, um, uh, they had Kane Lambert out due to a hip and calf injury. He'll miss one to two weeks of footy. Uh, they have Nick Lawson with a knee injury. It's a minor MCL. Uh, he'll undergo a fitness test. Shane Edwards will undergo a fitness test for an ankle injury. Basha Hawley has got a syndesmosis, so he'll miss four to six weeks of footy. For the Cats, uh, they had Mark O'Connor out uh, with a hamstring injury. He'll undergo a fitness test. Jeremy Cameron will miss four to six weeks due to a hamstring injury. Uh, so not good news for the Cats there. For the Demons, they had Nathan Jones out due to a calf injury. He'll miss one to two weeks. And Bailey Laurie has had a setback on his shoulder injury. He'll miss four to five weeks of footy. For the Giants, Jack Buckley, uh, it's confirmed that he has done an ACL. So he'll miss the rest of the season, unfortunately. For the Crows, Tex Walker has got a neck injury. Uh, he'll undergo a fitness test. And Luke Brown will undergo a fitness test and be monitored after pulling up uh, a bit sore with Achilles soreness after their clash up against the Lions. For the Lions, they had James Madden out due to a hand injury. He'll undergo a fitness test. And Lockie Neal uh, was a late withdrawal due to a calf injury. He'll undergo a fitness test as well. Harris Andrews has picked up a little uh, knee injury. And he'll undergo a fitness test uh, as well as those other two players. For the Blues, they had Sam Doherty out due to an ankle injury. He'll miss five to seven weeks. Patrick Cripps has a foot injury and he'll undergo a fitness test. For the Hawks, they had Will Day out due to an ankle injury. His period on sidelines is to be confirmed. Port Adelaide had Kane Farrell out for the season due to a knee injury. Uh, Tyson Goldsack rolled his ankle in the SANFL and he'll undergo a fitness test. For the Eagles, they had Andrew Gaff out uh, with a thumb injury. He, his period on sidelines is to be confirmed. Jermaine Jones has sprained his ankle. Uh, that will be assessed during the week. And Jack Redden has a knee injury. Uh, and his period on sidelines is to be confirmed by the club. Uh, 
For the Pies, Josh Jacobs has suffered numerous fractures to his finger and he will undergo surgery. Uh, so he'll miss six weeks of footy, unfortunately. Uh, for the Dogs, Ed Richards was out due to illness, but he should be okay. Uh, and Aaron Norton has suffered concussion. So his period on sidelines is to be confirmed uh, for after this week because he will at least miss uh, round 17 due to concussion protocols. Speaking of round 17, it starts on Thursday night. Port Adelaide take on the Demons at Adelaide Oval. It's at 7.40pm. Now, I'll go through the rest of the round 17 fixture with you guys because uh, it has been... Uh, a bit, you know, it's been changed quite a bit due to um, COVID-19 uh, and the ongoing pandemic. So Thursday night, as I mentioned, Port versus the Dees. Um, Friday, you've got the Bombers up against the Crows at 7.50pm at Marvel Stadium. On Saturday, you've got the Hawks up against Fremantle at 1.45pm up in Tassie. Then you've got the Blues up against the Cats at 4.35pm at the MCG. Then the Lions take on the Saints at 7.25pm. The stadium for that game is to be confirmed uh, throughout the rest of the week. On Sunday, you have the Giants up against the Suns at 12.40pm. Then uh, it's at Mars Stadium up in uh, in Victoria, up in Ballarat. Uh, then you have the Dogs up against the Swans at 3.20pm at Marvel Stadium. Then the Tigers take on the Pies at 4.10pm at the MCG. And then Monday night footy is back. The Eagles will take on the Roos at Optus Stadium at 7.40pm. It's looking to be a sellout crowd, uh, which is great to see. So footy. Five days of footy. Strap yourselves in, folks, because it's going to be a rip around. Uh, and we are so lucky. I keep um, reiterating this throughout the season. With the ongoing pandemic, we are so lucky that our season is still alive. Got to love footy. Right, guys, if you like that recap and you want to see more of my content, remember to hit that thumbs up, like, comment, and hit that red button down there that says subscribe. Much appreciated. For more content, follow me on my Facebook page and also my Instagram page.